In today's video, we are going to discuss the three phases of transformation. Uh, transformation is a very popular topic or subject when it comes to uh, believers. Uh, we all have a desire to grow. We look at the scriptures and we feel like, man, I wish I could be further along than I am. And so you see the word being transformed throughout the scriptures. And so it's kind of intriguing as to how does God transform us and what is our responsibility? What role do we play? And I will say this right off the start is I believe that we we feel like we play a bigger role uh, in our transformation than we really do. And I believe we have reversed the process oftentimes of how to see transformation take place inside of our life. Uh, before we get on to uh, the three phases, <clears throat> I think it's important to understand that transformation is not behavior modification. This is not about just changing your behavior. That's not the goal of Christianity. I often say it like this, Christianity is not a script that you just simply follow or a mold that you simply fill into. <clears throat> so transformation is not behavior modification. It's not like here's the mold and then we just act accordingly and try to do our best to act as best as we can. You know, I find this to be the case with a lot of parenting is that we simply are trying to raise Christian kids that don't have Christ living within them. I love how the Apostle Paul said it in Galatians 2.20. He says, I have been crucified with Christ and it's no longer I who lives, but Christ now lives in me. In the life that I live now, I live in faith. And so this is about Christ living in us. It's not about just behavior modification. Uh, this is not about striving to be a better Christian. Uh, the goal of Christianity is not to just be better. It's not to say, I'm here and I want to be here, and then God's more pleased because we're a lot better Christians than we were when we started. I think that's a misconception. I think many of us are after becoming better, and I think it's a fallacy. I think that we're missing a lot when it comes to what God's working in us simply because we're so fixated on being better Christians. Um, transformation is not about measuring yourself. Man, how many times have you measured your Christianity? Whether it was against another person, um, or you measured it according to what Christ looks like, or maybe a, another person in the Bible, uh, you started to measure yourself. You know, I'm really good at reading my Bible and going to church and giving, and then you read a book about, man, what about uh, how you speak to people and your prayer life? And you're like, man, I, I thought I was a good Christian, but I'm missing this and this. And then you start to kind of compile the list uh, of how you're going to measure your Christian life by. And some have a small measuring stick and have, some have a large. But regardless of whether it's small or large, it's unnecessary. It's not part of the Christian journey. Um, transformation is not comparing yourself to others. Like, wow, look at me. I'm... I've come so far compared to so-and-so. We've been Christians for the same amount of time and look at the disciplines I have or how God's using me. Um, and transformation is certainly not a quick process. I think the seed of it can be um, received quickly, but that seed needs time to grow into maturity. I love it how Paul said, I, I pray that Christ may be formed within you. So that's what transformation is not. So what is the phases of transformation? The reason why I, I believe there's phases is because I, I believe that although it may look different for many people, uh, this, we all have to go through the same phases to see a life that has been transformed by Christ and His Spirit living within us. The first one, and let me just say this, many times we get so fixated on changing our behavior that we focus on behavior. I just want to warn you not to focus on behavior. That's not where this begins. If you if focus externally, internally, you can still be broken and uh, in bondage and not free and not delivered. And so we're not focused externally as much as we are first internally. 
And so where does it begin? It begins with God giving us a lens upgrade or a new lens. That is, it comes from Isaiah chapter 55 in verse number 8 and 9. He says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord, nor are my ways your ways. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts above your thoughts and my ways higher than your ways. And so oftentimes when transformation happens, God wants us to see something from His perspective. He wants us to catch a glimpse of something. And, and another way of seeing it is perspective or seeing um, from a different perspective. Ephesians chapter 2 says that we've been raised up with Christ, seated in heavenly places. And so there's a new perspective that we are to see life from. It says that we are overcomers and we are more than a conqueror. So you start to see perspective and, 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 and this lens from an overcomer and a more than a conqueror and a in Christ, in heavenly places perspective. It changes the way that you see life. But what is this lens upgrade? What is it attempting to cause us to see differently? There's four things. One, he wants us to see his circumstances differently. You know, a number of years ago, one of my favorite teams at the time was the Patriots, and they were down, I believe, a 28 to 3 uh, to the Atlanta Falcons in the Super Bowl. And as you're watching it, you're filled with anxiety. Are they going to win? Are they going to get blown out? Is there any chance that they have of coming back? And then over time, they came out and they won that game. Now, just imagine for a moment if you sat down, but you knew the end result before you watched the game. So it was recorded. Somebody told you the score. The Patriots won. And now you're sitting down. And now you come to the place where they're down 28 to 3. How do you feel? You feel a sense of rest. You feel a sense of peace. Why? And excitement because you're like, man, I know the Patriots won. Now they're down, but I'm excited to see how this turns out or how they came back. And that's what God is like. He's already seen the end. He's already been where He's bringing you. And so when He wants you to see circumstances differently, it's because He's seen, he's seen the end of them and we're in them. And so oftentimes He can give us a glimpse through a promise into the end of the circumstance and it will bring rest to our souls. Uh, he wants us to have a lens upgrade toward others. Uh, to see our enemies differently, to see our family members differently, to see our spouses and our children, to see them from His perspective. Oftentimes we can become frustrated, angry, embittered, enraged, uh, annoyed, when in fact when you start seeing things through the lens of love, you start to have empathy for people, compassion for people, you start to show mercy to people, and you want to extend grace to people. He wants to give us a new lens of Himself. As you heard me say in many of my YouTube videos, is that this journey is about discovery, not destination. Transformation is about discovery first and foremost, and you start to see God from a right perspective. Now, I don't have a perfect perspective on God, but I would say it's not as flawed as it used to be. I used to see Him um, cold at times with a disappointed posture toward me of... If I only did good enough, then he would be proud of me type God. And so he, he upgraded me to see him differently, that he is always good. He always has my best in mind and he's always setting me up to succeed in what he's called me to do. And so that was a lens upgrade that he gave me. And then the other lens upgrade that he wants to give is to see ourselves according to the way that he does. Many of you listening to this just beat yourself up way too much. You listen to the critic within you way too much. And you feel that God feels the same way you feel about yourself when in fact if you would just go and look at the scriptures, you'd find that David said, your thoughts toward me are numerous and they're precious. They're more in number than the sand on a seashore. How, how precious are your thoughts toward me, O God? When you start to realize His thoughts toward you are precious, everything changes. So phase number one of transformation is He starts to upgrade your lens. Father, help me to see what you see when it comes to circumstances, others, God, and myself. As you begin to get this lens shift, now your responsibility kicks in of 
Now you must renew your mind to that new lens, that new perspective. So now you start to see circumstances a particular way and they get harder. And you're like, oh man, I thought this was going to turn out for my good. I thought God was always good. And now you start to not think according to that lens. You start to adopt your old lens again. So the key is to have your mind set on this new lens. It's a new way of thinking. It's saying, okay, God, this is how you see something. I am going to renew my mind to that new lens change. I remember a lens shift that the Lord gave me was when I went through a challenging ministry exit. Um, you know, I felt as though I was unfairly treated, betrayed, so forth. And the Lord said, Justin, you are never the victim, but you always overcome. And that was a lens shift. But I had for a few months to renew my mind to that lens that I'm never the victim, but I always overcome. Was I victimized? Yes. Was I the victim? No. I'm not holding that lens. Why? Because I always overcome by the grace of God. Uh, another mindset or, or, or shift or lens that the the Lord had given to me uh, when it comes to uh, my life was uh, His goodness. And I had to take months to renew my mind to, God, you're always good. You always have my best in mind and you're always setting me up to succeed. Another one was when I was freaking out over circumstances, um, He taught me how to see life from a place of rest. Now that took more than three months, just roughly around that time until I start seeing life from a place of rest through my shepherd rather than circumstance. Uh, so Romans 12, 2 says that we are to renew our mind. Philippians 4, 8 says, meditate on these things. Uh, fixate your mind on these particular thoughts. So the phase is God says, I have a, a way of seeing. Do you want to see it this way? He gives us a glimpse into the way that he's seeing. Now my responsibility is, okay, I am going to renew my mind to that new lens change and adopt a new way of thinking so that I'm thinking about circumstances, others, God and myself differently than I was. Because think about it. Where do we get these growing up? We get them from our parents. We get them from our bosses. We get them from TV. We get them from people that have been broken and also that maybe do not have the Spirit of God behind them. And so we adopt lenses that we pick up and we see circumstances, woe is me. We see others, I can't trust anybody. We see God, well, God's just some mean, angry being up there. And we start to see ourselves as I'm just no good and worthless. We adopted a lens. So, these lens upgrades are important. I now renew my mind in these particular areas of life. And then lastly, God wants us to learn, according to this lens, a new language. Now the language in the part of Christianity that I uh, grew up in, many times they started you there and I think it's a big mistake. I think that you miss something when you start with language and not a lens. And when you start with a language, you're, you're, you're attempting to bring something to pass by what you say, but you truly don't believe or see it from that perspective. And so eventually the battery runs out on your language and you start eventually complaining and talking about what you're going through. Uh, so this is a different vocabulary. You know, when you grow up, you learn a vocabulary in life. You know, this day sucks or this day is bad or I'm just having a bad day or you know what, this year was just a total wash or I can't trust anybody. These are language things and out of the abundance of your heart, of course, your mouth speaks. So once this lens is kind of being adopted by you renewing your mind, it's important to keep your language in check. The Bible says, uh, let the weak say I am what? Strong. Doesn't mean that you're not weak. It says, let the weak say I am strong. And so this language is extremely important 
but it's not just to manifest something. Don't, don't, don't mistake what I'm saying. I'm not saying, hey, if you speak it enough, it's going to come to pass. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a new vocabulary that lines up or is in alignment with this lens and these new thoughts. It's a language of what? Gratitude. I know a lot of people who complain. That's their language. That's their lens. They see life from a, a very half full type cup. Uh, but it's a language of gratitude. You wake up, start you know, using your language of God, I thank you that you're always good. You always have my best in mind and you're setting me up to succeed. It's a language of authority. You're not speaking from a place of woe is me. You're speaking from a place of the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of me. The same Spirit that was in Christ dwells in me. And I can speak the Word of God from a place of authority. And I can pray from a place of authority. It's a language that is seasoned with grace. That your words are seasoned with grace and that they edify those who hear them. Uh, it's a language of mercy and not judgment and not harshness. It's a language of mercy. It's a language of encouragement. Not discouraging people, not demeaning people to encourage. It's a language to encourage yourself. It's a language of faith and not doubt. I know why things shouldn't work out or can't work out or won't work out. But you know what? When I start to see things from God's perspective and I realize that the Patriots win the Super Bowl, I can start to speak, man, we have the victory. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. I'm not lying because my Father has shown me the end of the game. I'm victorious. It's a language of hope. Hope is so necessary in today's world. It's a language of saying it can get better. It will get better. God's working. God's moving. God's doing something behind the scenes. And lastly, it's a language of love. A love that not only comes from the Father, but it's extended toward everyone inside of our path. So I hope, hope this helps you understand that the transformation phase or process begins with a lens upgrade. Regarding these four things, you renew your mind to this lens, and now you learn to speak a new language that is in alignment with who you really are. Your new man versus your old man has two different languages. And maybe sometime in a video I'll share the difference in how they, they see and how they, they talk. So I hope this has helped you understand that transformation is not the goal, but it is the process by which he grows us. And he does it through these three phases. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. And I appreciate you subscribing to the channel. God bless.